So now that we have our ERC20 implemented and we also know how to test our contract now, we can actually write the first test in our project that we have. And as a reminder here, we have our ERC20 contract and the tests itself that were auto-generated can be found under test and then index.ts. And right now you can see there are already some example tests here, which are for this example greeter contract. But now we want to write our own tests for the ERC20. And for that first, you want to go to the command line and just do npx hardhead compile because this will first of all compile the ERC20 contract, but then also it will auto generate types for us in TypeScript. And you can see here type chain for target. So basically this is what we are going to use in the tests. So now let's go back to our project. And first, this is the example greeter testing code. So let's just delete that and write our own code now. And as a reminder, the structure that we'll be using here is first creating or deploying the ERC20 contract. And then we're doing two transfer tests, one with 15 tokens, one with 10 tokens. And in the case of 15 tokens, it will fail because we only have 10 tokens. So let's start to implement this. So we first start just with a high level describe and we put our contract name and then we put a function here. Now let's first implement the before each, which will deploy the ERC20 contract. So that's just before each. And then in brackets, you just pass another function. And in our case, we need to pass an async function because deploying the contract will be an async function call. And now basically we have to deploy our ERC20 contract and we can first create a factory using the function from ethers called get contract factory. And then we just pass in the name of the contract that we want. So that's ERC20. And now you can already see here that this is actually already of the type ERC20 factory because we compiled the contracts and it auto compiled also the types for us. So now this has already an ERC20 type here. And then next we can deploy a contract. And then here you basically type in the parameters to the constructor, so name and symbol. So let's just do hello symbol. And now we can just write a wait and now our contract dot deployed. And this will ensure that we actually waiting for the contract to be fully deployed to the blockchain. So now we have this first part here where we deploy the contract. Now we need to do the second part of when I have 10 tokens, mint 10 tokens. So let's do another describe here that says when I have 10 tokens. And again, second argument is the function where now again, we can just use this before each here. And now here in this side, before each, we somehow have to mint 10 tokens to an address. So how do we do that? This is a bit of a problem for us because our ERC20 contract right now has actually no way to actually be minted. So let's add this quickly to our ERC20 contract. And for that, let's write an internal function. 
that simply mints tokens to an address and the amount Yeah, and let's just prevent minting to the zero address. And then of course we have to increase the total supply. And then actually change the balance in the balance of mapping. Now, this is of course an internal function, so we have to use it in the contract. So what we would just do is we mint some tokens to the person who's deploying the contract. So in the constructor, let's just do mint to msg.sender and let's say 100 tokens. And this is, if you remember, the contract here has 18 decimals. So 100E18 is actually this number here like basically 100 with 18 zeros. So if we pass this number, this will actually just be 100 tokens minted to the deployer. So now I know when I deploy the contract here, the person will have 100 tokens automatically. And that means here we can just actually transfer 10 tokens. We don't have to mint 10 tokens. And to actually get the contract now here, we need to define it in a higher level. So let's do let my ESC20 contract and it's of the type ESC20. And now we set it here so that we can actually use it later on. So now here we can transfer, well, to some address and 10 tokens. So how do we get this sum address now? And just realized if you have VS Code, you can actually auto import if type is not found. So here I forgot to import the ESC20 type. So we can just quick fix and import. And now we have the type properly imported. And now to get this sum address, we can first define it in the top here. And we say it's a signer with address. And this will import the type from hardhat here as a signer with address. And then we declare it here. So ethers.getSigners will basically give you all the signers that are available for you to be used in your local blockchain. And the zero one would be the one that deployed the contract that's automatically used. And if you want to use another one, let's just use the first one here. And then here, this is now a signer. And to get the address, it's just a dot address. Okay, so now we have the setup done and we can do an actual test. So let's say another describe when I transfer 10 tokens. And now we can do our first it, which will be the actual test. So it should transfer tokens correctly. And now we again need an async function because we will be doing some async contract calls. And now we can do await my ESC20 contract dot. And now we of course want to actually not send with the first, the zero signer, but the sum address signer. And to do that, you can just do dot connect sender. And now we have to transfer it somewhere. So let's just do some other address that we declare. 
and transfer 10 tokens. And some other address we can just create in the same way as we did the sum address. So let's just copy and paste this, some other address and use one higher. So just the same thing again. And then of course, dot address. And here, this of course should be some address that we declared before, not sender. Okay, so this should now transfer 10 tokens. And now we can do an actual test to check that the tokens were transferred as expected. And for that, we use this expect keyword. And now we can just check the balance by calling the view function of the contract. So balance of. So some other address now. And then you can just write two equal 10. And of course, dot address. So this is our first test now. So basically when some address has 10 tokens and some address transfers 10 tokens to some other address, the new balance of some other address should of course be 10 because it's an unused new address. So the first time he receives our token, now he should have a balance of 10. So we can test that and just write npx hardhead test. And this will automatically create a blockchain for us and deploy the contract and basically run the test that we just wrote. And we can see the tests are passing. So now for our second test. So if you remember here, when I transfer 15 tokens, it should revert. We can just copy paste this because it's going to be quite similar. And then just say when I transfer 15 tokens, it should revert the transaction. And now we don't need this balance off here anymore. And basically this function call now here will already fail. So we actually have to also transfer 15 here. And now because this function call would actually throw an error in JavaScript, we have to basically catch the error and test that the error happened. So this is what we expect, right? So you can do that by doing a wait and then expect and then put the function call in here and then just to be reverted with. And then here you can put the revert reason. So basically the string that you entered into the require call in solidity. So in our case, this would be transfer amount exceeds balance. All right, so we can just again run the test here and see that indeed the tests are succeeding even though the one here is actually the transaction reverting. 